Shaddai International Christian Center London is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. We are a multicultural church with over a thousand members from more than 55 different nations. Our meetings are family oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family and we look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome, welcome once again to today's broadcast. I am so glad you could take the time to just sit under the word as we endeavor to show you some mind-boggling truths concerning the fact that you, you can literally change your whole life by choosing your thoughts. You know, if you can choose your thoughts, thoughts, you have unlimited possibilities. And when you examine the Word of God, it's really not a matter of if. It is a matter of when you decide to change your thinking, then your whole life changes. And so today we're going to talk about setting new mindsets. How do I go about changing my defeated mindsets and my limitations and all the things that seek to impede and constrict and limit my advance in the things of God and embrace a whole new set of ideas and thought patterns that empower me and bring me to the place where I can receive the fullness of my inheritance in Christ Jesus. So as you join me today, I pray the Spirit of God will minister to you these and many more truths that can literally change your life forever. And I look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. Let's say it like a minute. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. Tonight, I will be taught the Word of God. And I boldly confess that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. And I will never be the same again because of the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living Word of God. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus that this is my receiving day. This is my receiving day. And I expect a miracle tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We came to glorify your precious name. It's so good just to be welcome in your presence and stand before you without fear, guilt, shame, or inferiority because we are washed in the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I am anointed today to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. And I also thank you that these, your precious people, are equally anointed with an anointing of understanding and courage to hear and to do your word. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Lord, today we choose to get wisdom. And in all of our getting, we get understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, please. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3. We have been dealing with this subject of unleashing breakthrough thinking. The mind of a conqueror, establishing new mindsets and winning the battle for our minds. And we have so far learned a number of things, fundamentally being that your life will be no greater than the sum total of your thoughts. That you will rise no higher than how you think. And so the book of Ephesians, the third chapter and Beginning in verse 20, the scripture says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think or imagine according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all 
generations forever and ever. Amen. Now notice the scripture says that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. I like that because I'm kind of wild in my asking. Uh, I like to ask beyond, I like to push the envelope, you understand. I like to go beyond the norm. I just don't want to settle for average. So I like a God that can do exceedingly, <clears throat> abundantly, above all that I can ask or think or imagine. And notice, God will do the thing that you can ask because you can think it or you can what? Imagine it. And so whatever you do, you got to engage in thinking right. You've got to engage in thinking right. Go to Proverbs chapter 23 and uh, I'm going to do some things by way of recapitulation, hoping that as we end the evening, you will capitulate on some of your fortified positions. Because tonight we're going to deal with setting your mind right. We cannot assume that your mind is set right. You know, a clock that is stopped working is also right twice a day. So just because you may look like you're right does not mean that you may be, uh, you may have been calibrated right. So we want to reset your mind and the instrument of that thing, as the scripture teaches, we will go on to see, the only thing that can set your mind right is the word of God. Nothing else can substitute for it. And as we go through this, I need you to understand that if you don't establish right thinking, you can never have right results. I don't know about you. I don't want to get the wrong results because my premise was right. In other words, if the assumptions, the underlying assumptions, the basis of your thinking, the, the fundamental convictions, the things that you assume to be true are actually not accurate, then it means that because you started off with the wrong information, regardless of how diligent you are, the conclusion will still be wrong. So what we want to do is bring us back to center and put us on the right foundation. Can you say amen? So now look at this, the book of Ephesians, I mean Proverbs 20, 23 and verse 7, for as a man thinks in his heart, come on, talk back to me, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So you are what you think. Would you repeat that after me? I am, I am what, I what I think. Come on, say it like you really mean it. I am, I am what, I think. what I think. Now, if you are what you think, you know, sometimes people say to you, who do you think you are? No, whoever you think you are. If you think you are, sorry. Sorry, you are. If you think you are no good, no good, you are. If you think you are beaten, beaten, you are. If you think you are outclassed, outclassed, you are. If you think you can't, well, bless God, then you can't. The person who says I can and the person who says I can't, both of them are right and they will have what they say. So we want to make sure we are on the right side of the equation of life. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he not. Let's look at God's desire for us as believers when we come to the things of God. Because today I want to start off right at the entry point. At the point where you and I came to Christ and what should begin to take place from that point going forward. So the book of 1 Timothy, please, let's begin to... Get into this. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. And I want to begin reading there in verse 1. Let's see God's desire. Therefore, I exhort, I can still hear the pages turning in the 21st century, we press. <laughs> Amen, amen. I'm just giving, pulling your leg. Okay. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, 
That includes women. For kings and for all who are in authority. Now, let me say something about uh, those who are in authority. Just because God set somebody up in authority doesn't mean they've been given the authority to abuse you. So we ain't got to be afraid of coming under authority because, first of all, God will judge whoever is in authority. Secondly, you are not required to obey anything that violates the word of God. So everybody safe. Say that after me. I am safe with the word of God as my campus. Okay, so now look at this. He says, for all who are in authority and that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and Savior. Now check this out. Verse 4. Who desires all men to be what? Saved. Now look at this. God desires all men to be what? Talk back to me. All men to be what? Saved. Saved. Now what should happen after they get saved and Come to the knowledge of the truth. Notice, it's not enough in God's economy for you to just be saved. Thank God you got born again. Thank God you renounced sin and you said Jesus of Nazareth is now the Lord of my life. Thank God that your past has been forgiven. But notice, that is not all there is to God's desire for you. He said, I desire... The Apostle Paul writing, he said, God desires for all men to be saved, including the murderer, including the man who committed the most heinous crime in the history of criminology. The will of God is for that person to be saved, including the ones you don't like. The will of God is for them to be saved. Can I preach this? Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery. And instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have the blood bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. But now notice this, after we get saved, the next journey begins, which is what? Coming to a knowledge of the truth. So the question tonight is, since you got saved, How much have you come to the knowledge of the truth? Now, listen to this. This is the language of travel. It's not the language of being stagnant or static. It is the language of movement. He said, when you get saved, I want you to begin a journey where you are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now, look at this. The implied picture is this. The truth is over here. And when you get saved, you start off from over here. Now, there's a gap between where you get saved from and where the entire knowledge of the truth is. That means when you get saved, you can't claim to know everything. You've just been saved two weeks. You can't know everything in the Bible. So instead of becoming a debater, you need to learn. Can you say amen? Amen. Because this is the mistake we make. You know, children, whether spiritual or, or, or natural, one of the things they do is they assume that they know everything. 
Amen. And what happens is we start debating a half-truth and we make a whole doctrine out of a half-truth. Therefore, we go off on a tangent and we make a mistake not to be balanced because we didn't see the whole picture just because we are a novice in the things of God. But notice you get saved over there. But God now wants you to get involved in a journey where you are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Somebody help me. You're coming to the knowledge of the truth. So now, when you get saved, it is God's will for you not to stagnate. If you are in the place where you are not growing, I submit to you that that is not God's best for you. The will of God is you should be better today than you were last year. That you should be better next year than you are today. Why? Because when you got saved, you started coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now, there's another category of people. Go to third, uh, second, second Timothy. Let's just see this. Second Timothy chapter 3. There's another category of people that even though they get saved, some things happen where even though they come and learn a lot of things, they just don't quite get it. And we're going to deal with that. Look at this. The book of Second Timothy chapter 3. And verse 7, he says, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, I've met so many Christians who are ever learning, but they cannot tell you what they really believe. I mean, they've gone to church for 20 years, but they don't know anything about the word of God. That's why you can't just go to church because they dance good, because the music is good. Or because all your friends go there. Or because you're you're looking at somebody you'd like to go out with. It's a better place to pull from. I'm preaching better than you are amen. You'll be amazed why people go to church. You can't just go to church because they all come from your country. You can't just go to church because they are your color. Hello, somebody. You can't just go to church because they all graduated from some university and your pride in that matriculation has brought you to a place where you are now a socialite among your peers, but really you go to church not for God, but for your social life. Now, look at this. You can ever be learning. That means don't just go to church and listen. Ask yourself, what am I learning here? If you've been going to church and you can't look at your notebook and find anything you've learned, you don't need to go. I'm going to say again, if you're watching me by television, leave the dog on church. Find somebody who goes, are you trying to get people to leave the church? I'm glad you noticed. That's exactly what I'm trying to get. If you go to church and they don't teach you anything, you don't need to be in that church. Amen. 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 Thank you for those few hand claps. You're going to see the implication. You're going to see the implication. You are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So question, wherever you've been going and whatever you've been listening to, are you really getting a better understanding of your covenant with God? Can you really say that in the last two months, three months, four months, six months, I have now understood some things that I never understood before and I am better in my walk with God and I now know some things that I did not know for years. Therefore, my relationship with God is in a better place. Can you say that? Okay, so that is the purpose. He said, when you get saved, you must begin to come to a knowledge of the truth. But don't get to the place where you're ever learning. So you just don't have to learn. You have to ask yourself, what am I learning? If you go to church and they're giving you a motivation speech, that's not why God sent you to church. He wanted you to learn about the word. If you go to church and they're reading the Times or the Guardian or USA Today or you are just talking about Sky News or Fox News or CNN, listen, that's not why you go to church. We go to church so we can learn the Word of God. Not just any knowledge, but the Word of God. This church is a preaching, teaching, healing ministry. Why? Because if we learn the Word, then you can get results at your house. So that's why... I don't care who starts to talk cute and come up with fancy titles. I'm going to stick with the Bible. 
I'm going to preach this even if I don't have a crowd. Have you noticed? If you preach the word, you ain't going to get a bigger crowd because some folk don't want to hear the real truth. They just want to feel better. But when you feel better, you go back to the same thing because you don't know better. And year in, year out, you keep going around the same mountain and there's no breakthrough. But I believe a generation is coming that is hungry for the word and they are ready to come to a knowledge of the truth. I'm going to come down. But listen to me. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So you must decide, I need to not only be saved, but I need to come to a knowledge of the truth. Go to Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 12. Let's see the condition in which you were. We're talking about setting your mind right. I can tell. We've not been thinking straight, looking at some of the stuff that has been happening. I can tell you're not thinking straight, looking at who, who you permit to dog you out and run your life. Hello, somebody. I can tell you've not been thinking straight, looking at all those bags under your eyes, tired all the time, depressed all the time, sad all the time, worried all the time. I can tell you're not thinking straight. Hello, somebody. Stuff's got to change because as you think, so you are. You're not going to go higher than you think. Romans chapter 12. Amen. Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore. He says, I'm begging you. It's a serious thing now. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but check this out, but what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice this. Be changed, be metamorphosized, be uh, taken from one state into another state, like if you were water, we will now vaporize you and you will become, are you understanding what I'm saying? Your state will completely change. We shouldn't be able to recognize you in the state that you used to be before the word of God came. Uh, can we look at your life and see a whole different person? And if we see the same person you used to be, then we got work to do. If we can still recognize everything about you like it used to be before you got saved, then you haven't yet begun to come to the knowledge of the truth. If you are just as mean, if you are just as depressive, if you are just as sad, just as judgmental, and you cannot move forward believing God, you are still controlled by fear. You are still under the spirit of timidity. You are still under what people say, and it moves you more than what the Word of God says. Listen to me. You must be transformed. You must be changed to the point where the people that once knew you, should they meet you now, they won't be able to recognize you. Why? Because when the Word gets through with you, it changes your literal state. Well, I'm so glad you could join us for today's broadcast. It's my sincere hope and prayer that the Word of God is making a difference in your life. Let me give you an opportunity today as you consider prayerfully what the Lord has been speaking to you because I know He's spoken to some of you regarding joining us as a vision partner, getting in on the opportunity to share the gospel and to affect generations with the life-changing Word of God as you sponsor it through your financial giving and prayers, standing with us in the gap, making sure that God opens doors of utterance in the nations to affect them with this gospel that changes lives every day. So if the Lord has been speaking to you about that, go to our website and sow a generous seed and get in touch with us. Send us your prayer requests because we want to stand with you not only by teaching you the Word of God, but by mixing our faith with yours and in partnership achieve greater results together than we would otherwise do by ourselves. And so until next time, this is Ramson Mumba reminding you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom, and in all of your getting, get understanding.
God bless you. Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery, and instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have a blood bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.